Welcome to you all. Happy season of spooks, spectres, spirits, and something else beginning with an S. Awful alliterations aside, it's finally October, my second favourite time of year. I basically have a whole month of listening to that one Andrew Gold song on repeat, or forcing my wife to watch Night of the Living Dead over and over again. My other October activities include listening to spooky podcasts, reading Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, and trying to find a new horror game to play through so that I don't just end up completing Lone Survivor yet again. In that effort, I was keeping an eye out for any game sent our way that had even the vaguest hints of horror theming. Luckily, I didn't have to wait too long, as we got the offer of a code for a game called Third Eye, which caught my attention. Apparently, it's a psychological horror game starring a character called Koishi Komeiji from Toohoo Project? Toho Project? Taohao Project? Whatever. Without doing any research on this, afraid of getting spoilers, I jumped right on in. So, did I have a good spooky boy time? Nah. I'm Will with Clickist. Now let's look at Third Eye. Normally, this would be the point where I try to explain a bit of the story of Third Eye to you, but for reasons that will become clear later, that might be a bit difficult. Third Eye has something of a surrealist mood throughout, which means that it's bloody difficult to actually tell what's happening. However, I will try. If you don't want spoilers for the game, I seriously, seriously suggest stopping here. Okay, here we go. You are Koichi Komaiji, a small girl who appears to be living in some sort of Victorian-era mental asylum. Maybe. You journey around figuring out how child psychology works and trying to make friends with a bunch of other people. You find it sort of difficult to do so because you're maybe dead, maybe a ghost, maybe something else entirely, or might even be dreaming. I literally have no idea at all. Also, your parents hated you possibly and everyone might be animals. Am I on drugs? I feel like I'm on drugs right now. The main form of the gameplay is basically just adventure game. You wander around the environments, picking up objects and interacting with other characters. You also have access to your third eye, a floating device in front of you which lets you see into the mental world. A strange place which I assume gives you insight into how things really are. This basically means that you often have to talk to characters twice, once in the real world and once in the mental world. Oftentimes, speaking to characters numerous times is the only way to progress past certain puzzles. Okay, so right off the bat, I just want to say that this game is an audio-visual treat. The artwork is very Tim Burton-esque. It's all dark and twisted, especially when looking around with your third eye. You'll often find that things take on a grotesque appearance, even if they initially seem mundane. Oh, you like those trees in the back? But how about now? These three things here, actually hanging bodies. You get the idea. In general, everything is visually very grim from the morbid design of characters' environments to the actual content of the story, at least the parts that can be discerned. There's a scene, and again, massive spoiler warning, where you actually chop off a little girl's head to use for a snowman. Fucking grim. In a good way. Overall, the visuals pair well with all the horrible shit which is going on around you, although the main character just seems to meet it all with bewilderment and a blank expression. The music plays as well with the visuals as the visuals do with the events in the game. Much like the well-paired music of Danny Elfman, the music in Third Eye relies heavily on piano as well as other orchestral instruments. There's also a fair amount of atmospheric noises placed throughout the music, and it all does a good job of conveying a dark and eerie tone. Get ready to see this in your next horror-themed tabletop RPG session. Oh, also you can actually just listen to the music in the music room option, which is a nice touch. <laughs> Moving on from the great visuals and sound production, things start to move downhill rapidly. First, I'd recommend not bothering with a controller if you're going to play this game. It doesn't actually tell you which controls are mapped to each button, and refers to each button on the gamepad as button 1, button 0, etc. So it's kind of just a pain to play it like this. Next up on my hit list is the way the game actually controls. Apart from moving around sort of slowly, which makes the numerous repeated occasions of backtracking painful as all hell, the game also suffers from terrible hitbox definition. Apparently I'm hitting this table here. Neat. Even working around these issues, it could be a pain in the butt just figuring out where you're supposed to go and what you're supposed to be doing. More than once, I ended up basically trapped in a maze, wandering around collecting items until I walked into the right room, or spoke to the right person, in the right way, the right number of times, and then was allowed to continue. What makes it also galling is the fact that you very rarely have to actually use an item in your inventory manually. Most of the time, if you have an item and you talk to someone or walk into the room you're supposed to use it in, the puzzle kind of just solves itself, proving that I learnt nothing. Also, while we're on the subject of controls, pressing the Z button doesn't simply force the text to finish writing itself, it immediately skips it. 
meaning that you have to sit and wait for every single line of dialogue to finish writing before you can read it all the way and move on. Several times I accidentally skipped important dialogue or had to go back and speak to the character again because I missed something. And so we come to the biggest problem with the game, and the cause of several of the other problems if I'm being honest. The translation. The game was originally written and designed by a Japanese developer, and as such had to be translated into English for it to be playable for us accursed westerners. The issue is that they didn't bloody finish it. There are several important story moments throughout the game which require you to make a decision about what you're going to do. Good luck making the right decision though, since the text comes up in Japanese. Despite my habit of binging anime and watching numerous abroad in Japan videos, my Japanese is a little rusty, so when these decisions came up I either accidentally decided or just picked one at complete random. That's not the only translation issue however. Someone was clearly using Google Translate since there are several pieces of dialogue that just don't make sense, like the character responding OK to certain phrases or seemingly disconnected subject matters. This issue mainly affects the latter half of the game, but it's still present and very annoying throughout. The interesting thing here is that I seem like I might be the only one who feels this way about the game. If you check out the store page, you can see that it has more than 90% positive feedback and glowing reviews across the board. After doing some digging to try and figure out what people loved about the game, I discovered a few interesting things. Number 1. All of the negative feedback this game has gotten seems to be coming from Chinese players. Not sure why, but there it is. Number 2. This series is based on a bullet hell shooter series which is usually more typically anime in its aesthetic. Number 3. There are several reviews here which mention what seem to be completely random uncounted words such as shrimp fries and croissant. I refuse to say it the American way, you're wrong. Wanting to dissect that first point a little, I took to Google Translate and found out that the Chinese version of the game does seem to be quite buggy. Several players reported that their keyboards wouldn't work with the game at all, and others said that the translation was pretty terrible. There was at least one or two people who did seem to agree with me that the game was confusing and not worth playing much, but there were few and far between, so that solved that mystery. From the last two points, I've come to the conclusion that this game really only works if you're already a fan of the original series. Clearly, there is a wider context which is missing here as someone who has never played a Project Tuhu game or whatever they're called. The appearance of the main character might be completely different, but there's so much going on here which becomes clearer after research into the characters and their backstories. I feel like a lot of these positive reviews are from fans of the series, hence the references which someone like me will never be able to understand. Seriously though, if someone is a fan, can you explain to me about the whole shrimp fries croissant thing? Seems really light-hearted, but from what I can tell, Koishi is a character with a pretty depressing backstory. Regardless, I think that the only conclusion that can be drawn about Third Eye is that it really does only work if you're already a fan of the source material. For everyone else, it's more confusing than trying to watch Evangelion on acid. Again. Thanks for watching, ghosts and ghouls. Get it? Because it's Halloween month. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please share it with your friends, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to help our channel grow. You can also check out my personal channel, where my Halloween special about the Goosebumps adventure books will go live later this month.